Hi, this is Wayne from Adreno Brisbane. I'm here to talk to you today in Adreno Tips about Spanish mackerel. Spanish mackerel are a favourite, especially for the newest barrows, because they're exciting. They're a big fish and they have a great run, and that's the excitement of them. They're also not a hard fish to spear if you know how to handle them. The first thing to look at in handling Spanish mackerel is body language. And I bring this up first because it is the biggest mistake. If you look too hard at any fish, it knows it's being targeted. Everything is eaten somewhere along the line in the ocean. Everything is a bait fish for something, including a Spanish mackerel. So you look hard at a Spanish mackerel or you bring a gun to bear quickly or something like that, it knows immediately it's being targeted. If you chase a fish, particularly a Spanish mackerel, it's going to be off. There are times when you can get in behind a Spanish mackerel who's swimming away from you and you can line it up and you can get a bit closer and within range and at some stage it will turn just enough to have a look at you. It doesn't feel fair because you're not really approaching that fast. Now that's not many fish are like this, but Spanish mackerel will do it. And it doesn't do it every time. It'll do it now and then. So sometimes you think, oh, you just chased the Spanish mackerel, and it doesn't happen. So you go, oh, it doesn't work every time. But every now and then you think you've lost every other possibility. You get in behind it, and the next thing it turns, and you can get a, a good shot through its, through its spine, up through the shoulder section. But most often, you show too much interest, you even a hard look at a Spanish mackerel, and it's gone. So body language is very key for hunting all pelagics because really you've got to get them to come to you. So somehow you have to become interesting to them. And you're going to have spear fishers all have their own system of it. I know one spear fisher who goes down, sees a Spanish mackerel, curls up into a ball. Spanish mackerel swims up, he opens up and shoots it. So it's just the, the fact that he curls up into a ball becomes smaller and the Spanish mackerel goes, this is interesting, could be some food here, and comes over and has a look. So that's one that uh, is a little unusual. But most often, if you can feign being interested elsewhere, you go and have a look elsewhere, the Spanish mackerel wants to go and have a look at what you're looking at. It might be over here, and you look or pretend that there's something here, its body, it reads your body language that there is something over there. So my little, what I call a, a mackerel dance, is if I see a Spanish mackerel, I stop looking at it straight away, pull my attention away, and I'll actually pretend there's something in front of me. And I'll stretch out. The mackerel being over here, he can't see exactly what's in front of me, so he comes over and have a look. And very often, he'll either swim straight in front of the spear gun and you just go plonk, or you'll swim and do a bit of a circle here. Now, I say often, it doesn't happen all the time. But uh, that's my little system, okay? Another thing you can do, I mean, and I still do this, if I see a Spanish mackerel and I can't get them to come over, to come over and have a look, I'll play with my rubbers, just pluck them or tap them. Maybe I'll shake the gun a little bit and uh, the little flopper on the end goes like this and that can be a little something that they're interested in. Uh, I know people who grunt in the back of their throat. <coughs> that sort of a sound. And uh, once again, it's just enough for the mackerel to pick you up as being not threatening because you're not chasing it and he comes over and checks you out. And you've got a chance when they do that, you know, and that's what you've got to be aware of is where they are. So sometimes it's a matter of just keeping the corner of your eye spotting where they are. And they might come in and they might head off again and you might have to shake your gun again and he comes in again. So there's a, a little dance that uh, sparrows will do just to actually get these fish uh, attracted in. Where do you find mackerel? Well, mackerel's an interesting fish as you can find them just about anywhere. They are a a uh, free-swimming pelagic type fish that uh, hunt in shallow water as well as the deeper water. It's not unusual to dive deep for them and it's not unusual to come across them in you know, even three or four metres of water. Uh, to find the right place, look for bait fish. Find out where they eat. So of course you're going to find mackerel where currents hit terrain. So whether it's a point 
or an island or even a bommie, an underwater submerged bommie, where currents hit it, it puts the bait, all the small stuff in the, up into the water. The small fish come along and eat all that, and that's where the mackerel cruise, you know, for example, a, uh, a ridge underwater. A mackerel will cruise down the ridge there looking for the bait fish that are there feeding on the, the food that's been swept up into the current, into the water column. But if you were to tackle a uh, mackerel as a, um, that you're really after a mackerel, like a, that's the fish you want, then you can't go wrong with going to what you do for virtually all pelagic type fish, and that is teasers and burley. So let's have a look at some teasers. <clears throat> I choose teasers that have a, a, something that's a little bit longer as opposed to just a sparkly, uh, sparkly thing. Something that approximates the food. And that's my thought on, on teasers. But teasers has, have two distinct uh, purposes. One is to attract a flash from out of the water somewhere and the mackerel come in to check out what it is. So the second purpose is to distract. And that means while the mackerel is coming over to look at it, it's looking at your teasers and not at you. And it enables you to get close enough to get a shot in it. So it's attract and distract. And that's the two purposes of this. Quite easy to dive with one teaser on a, on a uh, float like this with two divers. One up, one down. And the person up at the top, he can sort of flick it, you know, to make it do that little bit of extra flash on it. And the person down below, he shouldn't be sitting right next to the teaser. He should be sitting around about a, a shot away. So the fish coming in to check the teaser out will be in his range. People ask, where do you shoot Spanish mackerel? And there's two schools of thought. There's the spine shot just behind the gills or midway between the, the rear fins. So you've got the anal fin and the, uh, the rear pectoral fin. And that's where the largest section of solid flesh is on a Spanish mackerel. The theory is that there's too much flesh to pull out. And this does work. Now the only problem with that is that if you've got sharks in the area and it's having a hell of a fight, you'll be attracting the sharks. So if you can get that stone shot, well, that's going to... Uh, handle the long fight and much less chance of having of losing your fish to sharks. So you have to make this choice, you know, which one you're going to do at whatever particular. If you've got a sitter swimming in front of you and you're confident on your shot, go for the stone, okay? But uh, once you've got the fish on the, on the spear, they're going to run. If you haven't killed it outright, it's going to run. And they are a hard fighter. It's not unusual if you happen to even have a reel in the mix. It's not unusual for a big fish to strip off you know, 30 or 40 meters before you can get it under control. So uh, if you've got, you know, if you're running a, a float and you should be safety wise, it's so easy. You let your gun go, you go to the surface. Now, it is important to, to not put too much pressure on the wound. They're a soft flesh fish. You put your body weight and drag along like this, it's quite likely the spear's going to rip out. If you think it's even a, a, a shot that doesn't have a lot of purchase on it, you let the float go and swim after it and let the mackerel tire itself out on the float. A lot of people just do this automatically. When you finally do get the fish up, there's another important thing, and that is stay away from the teeth. The teeth are razor. You, you know, it's quite, you wouldn't worry so much about a kingfish. Kingfish got sandpaper, you know. But a Spanish mackerel, you get your fingers near its mouth, it'll close them on it, and, you know, it's going to be probably, most likely, a hospital job. You don't want that, especially if you happen to be, you know, a long way offshore. So uh, stay well away from those teeth. Go for the holding through the gills, etc. You know, grab the head up like this near the mouth, and you could be in a problem. Regarding that, they will thrash around if they're very green while you pull them up. So uh, just keep away from those teeth. Probably uh, the best way is you get your hands in the gills and your legs wrapped around the body on a big fish. Most often, a small fish you can grab by the gills and it's yours. You know, big fish wrap your your legs around the body and then you can actually kill the fish. So in southern Queensland, the Spanish mackerel start arriving when the water warms up after winter. It is possible to come across them any time, but there's a, just a, a lot less around, you know, when the water's cold. When the water's below 20 degrees, they're not so 
frequent. As soon as it starts building up towards summer, in come the Spanish mackerel. You usually see the big ones first, or, and then uh, you start getting the schools and schools of them, you know, as the water gets warmer and warmer. Wayne from Adreno Tips, happy mackerel hunting. <laughs>